Good morning, everyone. It is six o'clock in the morning, so if I'm looking pretty tired, then that's why I've been awake literally five minutes, haven't had my coffee yet. We are underway bright and early. We have just left the anchorage that we arrived at last night after a pretty like full on motor sail from Pattaya, our very first sail, just Nick and I, but also two very special crew members, Nicky and Jason from Gone With The Winds. I'm sure you've heard of them. Got in and, you know, we had a beer much needed and then we went to bed but bright and early with the sun this morning beautiful sunrise actually a really nice anchorage which we obviously weren't, weren't able to appreciate last night quite a few fishermen out this morning we've got jason Wynn and enjoying his uh morning walk <laughs> he's feeling better that's nice and today we have 100 miles which is going to be a long day i'm really really hoping the conditions are a lot better than yesterday and tonight we'll be tying up fingers crossed, in Koh Tao, one of my favourite islands. I've actually been there before on holiday many, many years ago. I can't wait. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Beautiful morning. Time for coffee, I think. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Yeah, you good. Remember you got two reefs, right? So we are underway. We are motor sailing because we are in a bit of a hurry today. Oh, I've just realized I've got some salt water on my lens. Excuse me. Okay, hopefully that's better. So we've got about 100 miles to do today, so we do have the engines on. Uh, but we do also have a little bit of a breeze, which is lovely. So, and I can see that the breeze is starting to strengthen a little bit, um, as I suspected and hoped it would as we got a little bit further from, from land. Doing about eight and a half knots feet over ground and we've got Nicky and Jason here making breakfast burritos for us I was like oh it's muesli for breakfast guys hope that's okay and Nikki, like being the absolute legend that she is she's like I'll make breakfast burritos shall I I'm like cool <laughs> please do Ah, uh, much better. Yeah. Like a uh, new, new human being. I'm actually alive. <laughs> so I don't know. It was like um, I got a stomach bug before we left. I felt clammy before we even got to sea. So I knew it wasn't seasickness. It was just like I felt clammy, like I was going to pass out. And I uh, excreted everything <laughs> for like three different times throughout the night before. So yeah, there was, there was nothing left in my body. It was just a, a classic case of Montezuma's Revenge yeah. or... Uh, Jelly Belly or whatever you want to, whatever the Thai version of that is. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, of course, this doesn't help and all the loud noises probably didn't help at all. But yeah, I don't, I didn't feel like I was going to throw up like sea soon. It was the other end that was having the problems. How are you guys finding people in our boat? I know you can see a lot about your own boat. Yeah. And what, what are you getting out of this time? A long list of notes. Honestly, of like, which was kind of a big thing we knew we wanted to do when we came on board anyway, because like, you're sort of like three steps ahead of us yeah. right now. And so it's nice to one, hear about your like handover and, and see trial experiences. So kind of just like setting the tone for what to expect. But I've been making like a long list of little things that I've been seeing. Like I didn't, I hadn't thought to put like a torch, like for melting things. I forgot to add that to my list. So it's like I've added that. Fans, lots and lots of fans. We need 12 volt fans that are uh, like battery powered yeah. so we can move them anywhere. It's nice to kind of have a similar ish situation where you can kind of like preemptively think of things because like you guys are still relatively close to shore, which is good. We will not be for our first passage. So like we're taking delivery and instantly like, you know, four day passage. So we're trying to take as many notes as we can. Our shakedown cruise will be a proper passage. Yeah. Proper passage in one of the most dangerous areas in the world. <laughs> that might be a hair dramatic. Uh, militarily, it's the most active place in the entire world right now. Oh, let's not go there yet. Okay. 
hopefully if it works out, we have a captain joining us from New Zealand and his wife, and they're both very experienced. It's not like we're setting off with strangers, which yeah. is also never a good idea on your boat. You, you want to have people you are comfortable with because they might see you in uh, not your best moments, like when you're flailing around with something because you don't know your boat yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. I'm like, but it, that's what I mean. Like, you want somebody who's forgiving because they know you. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. totally get it. You yeah. know, instead of being like, oh my gosh, what have we done? What are we on board with? You that's know, fine. that's gonna be us in two months. <laughs> We're going to be right there. Exactly. So, yeah. Today we're doing like a slightly different... Oh, thanks, Nikki. Oh, all right. I just flipped the screen around. Oh, that was okay. Whatever. We're doing it a little bit differently today. We're actually taking like proper watches. I think yesterday we just weren't in the swing of things yet. And we were just all like... Well, apart from Jason. But Nikki and Nick and myself were just on watch essentially all day, the three of us. So today we're actually dividing that up a little bit. So yeah, Nick's been off watch for a couple of hours. I think, am I on watch in one minute's time? Uh, Nick, is. Nick is, okay. I've lost track already. I think today's, it feels a lot easier. The boat is more comfortable and yeah, we'll be getting an after dark again, but that's okay. So I think, yeah, we'll just settle in for hopefully a nice afternoon. There seems to be a black line chasing us down. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty dark under that cloud behind me. So we've just faked the main halyard to um, be ready to drop the main if we need to. I've never experienced a school on a boat in Asia before. Uh, so I'm not quite sure. Where? Of course. Yes, no, that's a complete lie. Yeah, in Thailand, quite a few years ago, we had like the downpour of a lifetime. Um, anyway, how could I forget that? Jason, meanwhile, is uh, taking his life into his own hands to get the shot. He's on the fore deck with a GoPro at the moment. And I'll tell you what, that is dedication. I mean, the wind is only like 15 knots, but our apparent wind is about 22. And uh, the wind, I can see there's a wind shift happening. And that is probably because of the school behind us. to turn off the engines because our, our wind is finally come around a little bit and sure. we're cranking right along at anywhere from eight to eight and a half knots and we've got 23 knots of apparent wind coming at us from about 72 74 degrees and we're just trying to figure out um, what little bit of tweaking we can do to eke out a little bit of better performance yeah we still have two reefs in the main and uh, yeah, and then we've just got the, the jib out. So, I mean, really, we're moving along. It, the sea state has gotten so much better. Oh, it's so, much better. Oh, it's yeah. so comfortable. Like, yeah. she's doing so good. It's really nice right now. Okay. 25 now, I just got the wind pick up. We hit 25. Just for a hot second. We've had a big two days. We are finally closing in on Pro Tau after almost 200 miles of, I wouldn't say enjoyable, conditions I would say they were challenging and I felt a little bit seasick today which has been weird but I've actually remembered why we do this in the first place and I can't believe that we can see Koh Tao and we're about to go and anchor off Koh Tao on our own boat that's yeah. not something I ever thought I would do I've been to Koh Tao before as a tourist many 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 years ago and now we're about to like that's fried chicken sandwich I ever had yeah, exactly. We've got memories there. We went diving there and we actually went um, on holiday there with my family, which was amazing. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would go back on my own boat. And that is the beauty of cruising. It's like arriving at these random places. Some of them are familiar, some of them you've never been to before and you arrive by sea. And it's just like, it's just a really weird way of traveling when you think about it. 
But yeah, just seeing this like island slowly kind of manifest itself on the horizon and just get more and more solid and bigger and bigger and yeah, it's a it's kind of indescribable how it feels. It it's weird. Anyway, I'm excited. I don't know, it's been a weird couple of days, hasn't it? It's actually been a weird week. We've had Ruby Rose 2 for five days now. And I think I think it's gonna take us a while to process it. Yeah, I was just thinking earlier, like this time last week I was in Bangkok, I've been here one week. I think, you know, this boat is gonna take a lot of learning. Like yeah. we can get a broad overview of the systems one thing that is really apparent is that um with ruby rose by the time we finished and sold her i could i could hear the boat was happy and i have i can't hear anything here I'm not, i don't know what i'm listening for yeah that's so learning how my boat sounds or our boat sounds is now pretty important it's a steep learning curve actually and it's it's sorry kind of say it's like selling they do say that catamaran sailing is like sailing by numbers but i've never appreciated how true that is until these last two days yeah yeah you don't feel the wind do you, you don't... and and this and that's one thing it's not a criticism actually because i still i would rather be in this protected cockpit uh for these last two days than i would anywhere else and i'll tell you for why right everyone's like oh well you can go up there on a fly deck <laughs> that in this weather seriously the other point is everyone's like well you navigate from inside actually if you're feeling queasy, you need fresh air. Yeah. Like, and you can't open those front windows. Yeah. So I, would I want to navigate from in there? No. Would I want to navigate from the stern like you do on a katana? No. Yeah. Like this this is the actually the most comfortable parts of this boat and we've been in I think we've had the swell from all directions in the last three days. We now got it like starboard beam, we, we haven't had, had it from the, beam. We haven't had it from behind. <laughs> this is the this is the, the middle point of the boat. Yeah, exactly. And it is a very comfortable motion, even with all of the movement. Yeah. Um, it's actually been surprisingly. It's, the pivot point. it's not. Yeah, it's a pivot point. And this if is you, a surprisingly comfortable. You go to the back. You go to the front. It gets yeah. re remarkably more pronounced. But um, I don't know. Like I've I've made some like stupid mistakes over the last couple of days. Like I couldn't even work out how to spring off the dock yesterday morning, which made me feel like Just, a real idiot. Teresa, you haven't sailed for three years, love. Two well, years. I know, but I still know how a spring works. But also, no, I know. I know, but listen. I think it's just the boat. It's the boat, but you know, all skill sets are rusty, though. All of them. You know, I'm I'm still picking stuff up. The only reason I'm kind of like a little bit ahead of you is because I've you know been with the I did the test sail up to the check. So I've sailed one of these boats for a week. Yeah, it's been full on. I mean, so far I have to say that it feels like we are on a really, really, really beautiful boat, holidaying with our friends and uh, going to some cool places, and that's. That's what it feels like. It doesn't feel like this is our home. It doesn't feel like this is our boat. It doesn't feel like this is ours at all. It's going to take a while for us to settle in and turn it into a home. You know, I go to like make a cup of tea and I don't know where anything is. I'm like, where do we even keep the mugs? All right, we're going to be in Kotao in, I don't know, an hour maybe. Hour and a bit. We'll be back, tied up in Kotao, ready for some adventures. We will. We have a small problem to so our uh, water maker, but it's not putting it into the tank. Oh, hey, shit! Well, it's salt water, which is a problem. Because this is um, issue 995? Yeah, something like that. It's, I was just saying to Nikki, like, I feel like it's been a baptism of fire, like getting back into boat life. The craziest thing of my entire life just happened. Sailing can bite you in the ass yeah. very, very, very quickly. <laughs> That is so much better. Why didn't we do that to begin with? <laughs>